comrades, sisters and brothers, my name is Ethel Buckley. Um, I, I am recently appointed as head of the services division in SIP2, the Irish Union, and SIP2 organises workers in the private and public sectors. We're a general union. Um, like many other countries across Europe, delegates, uh, in recent years, Ireland has seen a sustained attack on worker protections, wage setting mechanisms, collective bargaining, working conditions, and a real driving down of the quality of jobs that's on offer to workers in Ireland. Many of the protections which generations of our four mothers and fathers fought as trade unionists to achieve were dismantled in the last number of years by the international and domestic bosses class who want to under undermine collective bargaining and they want to deny their own responsibilities as employers and to force the responsibility for the employment relationship onto individual workers. I'm going to speak for the next number of minutes about that phenomenon, the phenomenon of flexible working hours, zero hours and casual contracts. But just before I, I do that, I do want to say that there is some good news from Ireland. In 2011, after the Troika arrived, our wage setting mechanisms and sectoral bargaining mechanisms in services were entirely dismantled and workers in the private services sectors were left without uh, a mechanism with which to bargain wages and conditions with employers. We mounted a massive campaign in SIP2, it was our priority issue across the private sector, to restore a mechanism for bargaining. And the good news is that in October 2015, the wage setting mechanisms for services sector workers were restored. And we signed a new agreement in property services for our cleaning and security workers. In January of this year, we lodged a claim for a living wage for cleaning and security workers. And we have an extensive agenda for working hours. In, in other parts of our services sector, we are restoring wages, and in 2015, we're starting to see wages on the rise again. The <clears throat> Thank you. The, the other piece of good news from Ireland is in the summer of last year, we achieved a new piece of legislation which put back on our statute books statutory collective bargaining. So I wanted to say that, delegates, that it's not all bleak. There is some good news, but of course that good news is on the back of very strong industrial organizing, campaigning um, and, and uh, worker involvement. So during the economic recession in Ireland, uh, many employers used the downturn as an excuse to hire new entrants on more casual contracts than existing employees. And as you know, comrades, this is very dangerous for unions, it's very dangerous for workers, because it leads to a two-tier workforce, and that is very divisive. In Ireland 10 years ago, the term zero hours contracts was virtually unknown. Unfortunately, I would say now it's a term that's widely known by the public, and that is widely used in trade union circles. And of course, it describes a whole range of very flexible employment relationships. And the essential thing is that those relationships allow the employer to dictate the working hours of the worker and to guarantee no regular salary and to make no guarantee on working hours. So in response to this growing phenomenon, SIP2 and our sister unions affiliated to uni have mounted a strong resistance to this race to the bottom. And after years of campaigning on the issue, in 2015, the government commissioned a survey to study 
the extensiveness of the problem. The employers, of course, say there is no problem. The employers say that workers love the flexibility of um, you know, managing, caring, and family relationships and their social life with these flexible contracts. And we needed real evidence to say that this was not the case. So the government study found that although zero hours contracts are not as extensive in Ireland as in other countries, we have a phenomenon known as if and when contracts. The employer will give you hours if, they have, if and when they have work for you. And what happens in Ireland is some people have entire if and when contracts and other people have some guaranteed hours and their additional hours are if and when the employer decides to roster you on. Delegates, last week in Dublin, um, at one of our meetings in retail, a young father of three, of three children working in the retail industry told our meeting that he recently missed his son's birthday party, which he had been looking forward to for a long time, because an hour before the party was to start, he got a text message from a manager offering him working hours. He went and worked the hours because he was afraid that if he didn't take up those hours, he wouldn't be offered additional hours. A number of weeks before that, I met two chefs in the south of the country, and one of them told me that he had worked 55 hours over a three-day weekend. He was very tired, and he complained to his duty manager. And the duty manager said to him, that's fine, there are plenty of unemployed chefs will take up your job no bother, um, there's lots of other people can do your work. And he hadn't received any hours from the hotel in the three weeks since he had made that complaint about being tired. This is the reality of the working life of somebody on a zero hours contract. It's impossible, of course, to plan a personal or family budget if you're never sure how much money you're going to earn from week to week or month to month. And precarious hour contracts also are very insidious because they tip the power relationship in favor of the employer. So if a manager likes you, you're rostered on. If a manager does not like you, you're not. And that encourages workers to curry favor with managers, which is a difficult environment for unions to organize in. I have to say, in employments where zero-hour contracts and if and when contracts are prevalent, dismissal or sacking is almost not a feature anymore because employers use working hours to hire and fire people. They don't have to sack you anymore. They just don't roster you on again. And whereas unions can take individual rights-based cases in the case of a dismissal or a sacking, if you're just not rostered on on a zero hours contract, there's no basis on which to take a case. So the government study in Ireland made recommendations that if they are legislated for, will definitely provide protections to workers which are better than what we currently have. But as a trade unionist and an organizer who has organized around the issue, I want to say to you delegates, that I think we need to do three things, really. The first thing that we need to do as trade unionists to fight back against this flexibility is to uh, mount and resource issue-based organizing drives among precarious workers. Because by recruiting casual workers into our unions on the basis that we will achieve better hours, better contracts, security of hours, um, we, we actually offer casual workers a real reason to join our unions, a real union premium. Often the workers most affected by these issues are very young workers and women workers. And tackling the issues that are relevant to young workers is one sure way to demonstrate why young workers should be in our unions. The next thing we need to do is to prioritize the issue of working hours in our collective bargaining. And we are doing that. We commenced in January national bargaining in cleaning and security. The key issue for us is a living wage and security of hours. 
And the final thing that we need to do is to educate the public, our members and potential members on the real threat posed by this casualisation. The employers have a very strong narrative, in our country at least, that workers actually like these flexibilities and as unions we need to counter that argument. I would say that ourselves in SIP2 and in our sister union mandate trade union we have done that very effectively in the Decency for Dunn Stores campaign which people can see online and on Facebook. I want to conclude delegates um, by, by thanking you for listening to me on this very significant issue. It's my first time at a uni conference and I'm delighted to be here. And also it gives me pleasure to introduce a film which Uni Europa has made on the issue of zero hours contracts. This film focuses particularly on the care sector. Uh, Oliver is interviewed in it. And one of our own members in SIP2, Samantha, tells her story of working on a zero hours contract. And she says that on a zero hours contract, I'm really at the mercy of my employer. So I invite you to watch the film, delegates. Thank you very much.